welcome back to the advanced algorithm I3341 course and uh, we will continue in the chapter 3 problem solving paradigms to reach the section 4 which is the most important section and entitled dynamic programming paradigms so we will divide this section into two lectures and today is the first one as we have already introduced last lecture the key skills that you have to develop in order to master DP are the abilities to determine the problem states and to determine the relationships or transitions between current problems and their subproblems. We will see these notions, states, uh, relationship, transition, current, and uh, and uh, a previous uh, a state and subproblem. All these notions, we will uh, see them today. We will know what we mean when we talk about them. So let us begin uh, to introduce what is dynamic programming. In fact, it is the most challenging problem solving technique among, among the four because we introduced first the complete search paradigm, then the divide and conquer, and then the greedy. And this one is the fourth and the most challenging problem solving technique. Uh, in dynamic programming, there is lots of recursion and recurrence relations. You have to be comfortable with recurrence. Uh, first of all, DP problems with small input size constraint may already be solvable with recursive backtracking. The recursive backtracking was introduced in this chapter in the complete search paradigm. And the top-down DP is nothing else but a kind of intelligent or faster recursive backtracking. Why do you, we use uh, dynamic programming? We use dynamic programming to solve optimization problems and counting problems. For example, whenever you see a problem that says minimize this, maximize that, count the ways to do that, there is a high chance that this is a DP problem. Most DP problems in programming contests only ask for the optimal total value and not for the optimal solution itself. So this is easier because if you have to list the solution, you have to uh, need you need to backtrack in order to reproduce it. You remember the eight queen problems we solve in compute, uh, complete search uh, paradigm. We saw two versions of this problem. One of them was to list all possible solution for a given context, and the other is uh, we were asked only to count how many possible solutions there is. And of course, counting the possible solution is easier than listing all the optimal solution. So uh, most of DP problems only ask of the total value or the optimal solution. However, some harder DP problems also require optimal solutions to be returned in some fashion, in some order. Okay, so we will see also how to reproduce the backtracking of the optimal solution. We will begin by illustrating the dynamic programming and the use and the need. And for this, we will use as an example to walk along the UVA 11450, which is entitled Wedding Shopping. And here we read, one of our best friends is getting married and we are all nervous because the first of us who is doing something similar, blah, blah, blah. We are, uh, we, and uh, we have to buy, uh, we have to buy garments. And the average problem statement is the following. Given different options for each garment, so you, you have to buy shirt, belt, shoes, dress, etc. And for each, uh, for each garment, there are different options. There are different models. And for example, you have three shirt models, uh, two belt models, four shoes models. And you have a limited budget, you have a limited amount of money. And the task in this problem is to buy one model of each garment. You cannot spend more money than the given budget, but you have to, you have to, and you want to spend the maximum possible amount. Okay, you don't want to leave money with you. you 
you can leave only the minimal amount. So, again, we will say that the input is given like this. You have two integers, m for money and a c for count, for example. And the budget is between 1 and 200. And the number of garments is between 1 and 20. You have up to you have to buy up to uh, 5 uh, to 20, sorry, garments. And follow these two numbers. There are info about the different garments that are available. For garment G, that is between 0 and C minus 1, you, can, you will have, uh, and you have to read an integer K, which is between 1 and 20. So every garment ha can have up to 20 models. And for each model, so K okay, is the number of models for this garment, and followed by K prices, one for each model. Okay, so you have you read M and C, and C lines, which begin all by K, the number of models, and then the different prices, K different prices for each garment. And you have to output what? You, we have to output one integer only. What is the maximum amount we can spend when we buy one garment of each of this? So, uh, one model of each garment, sorry. And we have to print no solution if there is no solution due to small budget. For example, you give us money and we cannot buy all the wanted. Let's take an example. This is a test case called test case, test case A and in which M is given to us equal 20, C equal 3, and for the first garment, 0, we have 3 models available. The first costs $6, then the second costs $4, and the third $8. The second garment is available in two different models, one of which costs 5 and the other 10. And the last one is available in four models and we can buy either the one that costs 1 or 5 or 3 or another model that costs also 5. We can, we can, uh, we can now note that the prices are not given in the in an order, in any order, sorted order, and they may be repeated among models and among garments. So for this test case A, what is the maximum amount I can spend given $20? I can spend $19. How can I spend them? I can either buy the model in garment 0 that costs 6 with the model that costs 10 in garment 1 and the last one uh, in the last garment I buy the model that costs 3 6 plus 10 plus 3 equal 19 either 4 plus 10 plus 5 or lastly 8 plus 10 plus 1 but the important thing that all these optimal solutions give me one optimal maximum value, which is 19. I can uh, not find any combination of the three garment, one model from each, that make uh, that op uh, optimize the cost. So I cannot spend twenty dollars. I can only spend maximum nineteen dollars. Another test case, test case B. Also the same prices and the same uh, garments, but I have now instead of $20, $9. And in this test case, you can, you can already see that if you take the, uh, there is no solution because even if you take the cheapest model, the total uh, in each garment, for example, 4 plus 5 plus 1, this will give you $10, this will cost you $10, and however you have only $9, so there is no possible solution, and we want to print no solution available. 
Now we want to solve this problem and before we attack dynamic programming, we, in order to appreciate the usefulness of the dynamic programming, we will first explore how far other approaches will get and we will demonstrate that all the other approaches cannot solve this problem in the time limit and therefore we need the dynamic programming paradigm. So let us begin to try to solve the problem with the greedy paradigm and we will demonstrate that we will obtain a wrong answer. Consider the test case A and this is the same as the previous test case A and the greedy will say maximize the budget spend and take the most expensive model for each G which still fits our budget and even if you formulate another greedy approach you will still get wrong answer so let's consider this approach and try to execute what is asked for let's consider test case A and try to maximize the budget spent for the first garment we have $20 and we can uh, buy the maximum, ex the most expensive garment, which is eight. And for the next uh, sub problem, we have 20 minus, we still have 20 minus eight dollars, which are $12. And we want to buy one of these possible models. So we will choose the maximum, uh, the most expensive one, which is 10 and uh, we will choose 10 and we will still have 20 minus uh, sorry uh, 12 minus 10 which gives us two dollars for the next iteration with two dollars i can only buy the garment with the uh, price one and this is a good solution this uh, makes me spend 19 dollars which is an optimal solution let's test the test case b which uh, we in which we have only nine dollars for the first iteration i will buy the most expensive because nine dollars can buy them it will leave me with one dollar only i cannot buy neither the five neither the ten dollars model and i reach the no solution which is also fine because there is no solution for this test case however However, this is this is uh, fast. This is fast. This is really fast because for each garment you have only one loop of the order of uh, the maximum number of different models, which is twenty, and you only sum these loops, so you have a total of twenty times each times each time twenty uh, order of twenty. So this is. 400 operations in the worst case however this is not a good solution because let's consider the test case C in which I am given $12 to buy and if I apply the greedy solution it, the $12 uh, make me um, capable of buying the garment of price 8 and this leaves with me four dollars for the continuation uh, with four dollars i cannot spend to buy garment d uh, the garment two and i will print no solution however this is an incorrectly report of no solution because there is a solution and consider that i buy the first uh, model that costs four then five, then three, this is a solution, and this is uh, of, of cost 12, in fact. And there is other solutions also that you can spot, like, for example, six plus five plus one. So here, the greedy paradigm did not help me to find an optimal solution for this problem, and I can get wrong answers with it. The other possible uh, paradigm is a divide and conquer i cannot consider also this uh, paradigm because this kind of problems is not solvable using dnc because the sub problems inside this uh, problem are not independent they are dependent so there is no possible solution let us consider the third uh, solution which is the paradigm complete search 
And let us say we will use the recursive backtracking. Let us model the problem as a function shop, which takes two uh, parameters, how much I have money and which garment I have to buy. And uh, money and garment represent the current amount of money and the current garment I, ha I am dealing with. And this couple now, the parameters here of this function are called the state of this problem. And we call them the state of this problem. And uh, the order of these parameters, money, comma, g, or g, comma, money, it does not really matter now. And what is the return type of this function? This function returns the maximum amount spent. Okay, so first of all, I give her the full uh, amount of money and we will begin by the garment zero because uh, no garment have been uh, bought yet. So we will try to buy the first one. And as long as this uh, function recurs, it will try to buy the next garment with uh, the with the um, remaining money and each time it will return how much money it spent so we will start by the money m and garment equals zero then we will try all the possible models in garment g equals zero okay we will try them all because we want to choose the most expensive one that can lead to an optimal solution not the most expensive one by absolute value so I, model i is chosen i subtract the price from the money because i spent this money and then i repeat recursively for the next one and when do i stop i stop when uh, i reach the last garment which is g equal c or we can consider the base case is the next one which is g equal uh, sorry c not c minus one and uh, whenever i'm iterating the recursive function shop if I receive the amount of money negative, that means I have no more money in my pocket, so I cannot buy the garment G. If this is not the end, I, I have to prune because there is, this solution is infeasible. I have to stop early. So, among valid combination, what shall I pick? Because I will see all the possible models. So, which possible model shall I pick? I will pick the, the model that uh, returns the smallest amount of money, the smallest positive amount of money, which is the maximum money spent, which is the maximum return value, because the function return value, it will return the money that it has spent, and it will take the money that it, uh, it was given. So I want to maximize the return value. And the complete search recurrence, or we can say the transitions, are uh, the following. Shop money, comma, G. If money is negative, then return minus uh, infinite or something like very small number, very small negative number to indicate that we have to stop. We, we cannot continue with this recurrence. If we reach another uh, another base case is that we reach the end of the we bought all the garments so if g equals c then you have the given money that is left w what did I spend I spent the given money that was initial minus what I spent so I return m minus money and in the general case you have to return the maximum value that was returned by the call of this function, recursive call of shop, by passing money minus price of G, because the current uh, garment is G, of model for each model for this garment so you, you you loop over each model of this garment and you see which price each model has and you call shop with this value with the value of the money subtracting the price of this model from it for the next 
government G plus one. But, however, this is very slow because you you don't have early you don't have really a lot of early pruning because for each garment you have to check all the possible models and you have by the given you have up to 20 garments and then you have up to 20 models in each garment so you have to loop them all after all you have to consider in the worst case this is 20 to the power 20 and this will take us more time than the three available seconds for this problem. However, one can ask a question. In this formulation, in the shop function formulation, is, this, is there overlapping? So, for example, let us consider cases of overlapping. Suppose that there are two models in a certain garment G, for example, for shoes, there are two possible shoes, they may be two possible shoes with the same price. So this is overlapping because you are calling twice the function shop with the same remaining money for the same next garment. So this is a case where there is overlapping. And overlapping waits wastes time because you are calculating exactly the same value twice or more. Another case for overlapping is that if at a garment G some combinations like money 1 minus P1 are exactly the same of like money 2 minus P2. Let us take an example. Let us consider this this test case. In this test case, we have three garments, G0, G1, G2, and G0 and G1 both have two models of price 6 and 4. They have both models 6 and 4, and in, G, in G2, you have three models, one that costs 1, one that costs 2, and one that costs 3, and you have the available amount of money, which is 12. Suppose you, this is a graph, this is the graph of states, because every state is, we said, every state is, the first parameter is the money we, you have left, you have, you can spend now, and the second parameter is the garment. So we begin by the initial stage, which is 12 comma 0. You have all the money, and you want to buy the garment 0. So in this state, you can go either left, either right. Either you choose to buy the garment 6 or you choose to buy the garment 4. If you choose to buy the garment six, uh, that costs 6, you still have $6. And now you have to decide on the garment 1. If you choose the garment 4 dollars, you still have $8, which is 12 minus 4. And now you are focusing also on the garment 1, which is the next. If in the this state you have $6, you choose to buy the garment with $4, which is the model, the first model in the garment 2, you will still have only $2 with the focus now on the garment number 2. And this is the exact same state where you can reach from the state 8 comma 1 because if you choose to buy the garment numbers uh, that cost 6, this will leave you also $2 and to focus on the garment number 2 from which you can continue also to buy either the garment uh, with $2 you cannot buy of course the model of uh, that costs 3 you can either buy the model that costs 1 or the model that costs 2 and that's why we have pruning here also because when you have $6 and you spend them all on the model 2 and the garment 1 you will be left with $0 and you, you didn't uh, buy yet anything for the garment 2 so this is uh, no solution uh, problem, this is a uh, no issue uh, pass, but also here you have two passes, but the, what we are showing here that uh, the state 2-2 two two is redundant because it was overlapped from 12, 0, 6, 1, you can reach 2, 2, 
or when you go 12 comma 0 8 comma 1 also you reach 2 comma 2 the same thing happens with the state 1 comma 3 because it can be attained either from 2 comma 2 or from 4 comma 2 and the problem here is that we don't know that they are overlap we are recalculating all the answers and this is what we want to show so what we want to say is that the search space is really not big it's not like 2 to the power 20 like the theory because many sub problems are overlapping so this is an inefficient state of affairs and here we notice that those conditions are both the prerequisites for dynamic programming. What are the prerequisites for dynamic programming? In dynamic programming, in order to say that a problem is a dynamic programming problem, we, we satisfy two conditions. The first one is the optimal substructure and the second is the overlapping subproblems. In the optimal substructure, the solution for the subproblem is a part of the solution for the original problem. Remember this? We saw this before. We, any time that the solution for a subproblem is a part of the solution of the original problem, this is called an optimal substructure. And this was in the greedy paradigm. This was one of the conditions of the greedy paradigm. However, the second one is not that of the greedy paradigm. The overlapping subproblem is the key characteristics of uh, dynamic programming. Uh, the, uh, the overlapping uh, uh, subproblem says that the distinct subproblems are few and they are overlapping. But the distinct subproblems are few, but they are repeatedly computed. And whenever you have those two prerequisites, you have to think of dynamic programming. So here we are different from divide and conquer because in divide and conquer, the subproblems must be independent. So let us analyze this as a basic TP solution. In our problem of uh, wedding shopping, how many distinct cases, how many distinct states, states by states we mean the couple money comma G we have. In fact, for money, we have only 201 possible values, which goes from the value of the money zero dollars to 200 dollars. They told us you have up to 200, very small range. And also for the garment, you have only up to 20 garments. So there is 20 possible value for the garment. So how many possible states, after all, I can have? I can have only 201 times 20, which gives me 4,020 possible states. And for each state, uh, what is the order of calculating the optimal solution? For each state, you just need to compute once, and then you solve this problem faster, and to compute each state, you have to iterate at most 20 models in order to, to choose the, the solution. So k is equal to 20 here because this is the number of the models. And what is then the time complexity? The time complexity is equal to m times k, which gives me 4,020 times 20, which gives me 80,000 operations only. And this is a very manageable calculation. So the formulation is easy and now you know that in a DP solution the memory space is the is the number of cases is sorry is the number of states you have to find the states and you have to formulate how many states you have. So the memory space you need the memory space as the order of M and the time complexity is of the order of K, which is the complexity for each state times the number of states. So K times M if one state requires order of K steps. So 
The GP solution implementation. To implement this, we have two ways. Either we choose the top-down approach or the bottom-up approach. We will now see the top-down approach because it is uh, like the recursive backtracking, but we add to it two small steps in order to improve it. The first one, we add the dynamic programming memo table in which we initialize with dummy values that are not used all the table dimension. What is the table dimension? It is the number of states. Okay. And in the second step, in the recursive function, we before we compute any step, we ask first, is this state computed before? Is this a déjà vu? And if the answer is yes, then we return the value that was memorized in the GP memo table. That's why we use a GP memo table. We use memoization. And to return a value that was a, a previously saved in a table, this is the order of one. There is no recursion here. And only if the answer is no that this state was not computed before was not computed before, in this case only I perform the computation and I don't forget to store the value in the DP memo table for later queries and then I return the value. Okay, so only when I ask to a, for a given value, I compute it if I have never computed it before. The code is very similar to the recursive backtracking and we will see it now. So this is the code and let us examine it. We have the maximum garment or maximum model which is 20 they told us so we reserve a little bit bigger array. Um, and the maximum uh, money amount is to, uh, 210 and then we said that the state is uh, of the, the amount of the money and the amount of the garment so let us see first we initialize the GP memo table we, we declare the memo table called memo of size max gm which is 20 times uh, 201 uh, and uh, then we initialize this with mem set memo two values dump uh, dummy values minus one size of memo okay now we have our gp memo table ready then with the recursive function gp and we call it with the initial values of garment 0 and money m, total value m. With this recursive function, we have it. Look how it is similar to the recursive backtracking. This is the recursive backtracking step. Because here, just like we read, just like we uh, wanted to do, if the money amount is negative, I will return a negative value, a very small value. Whenever I receive this value, I will print that there is no solution. And um, if I reach the final state, the, fi the state where the garment is equal to C, because there is in fact uh, from 0 to C minus 1, so this state is a dummy state, I will return M, capital M, minus the money that I have uh, left. So what I spent is M minus money. Those are the two base cases. And the recurrent case, I have to traverse for each model. I, I know the model price. It is in the, uh, for K, for any K, between 1 and price of G0. The price of G0, in fact, it stores the number of models for each garment. So for any K, the price is price of G, K. Uh, I will call I will call this value I will call this function dp to the next level g plus, plus 1 and the money that will be available is money minus the price of this current and I will take the maximum return value in this loop 
So the answer is kept only if it is bigger than the current than the than the answer, which is initialized to minus one. So after this loop, I will keep. I will choose the k that gives me the biggest return value for dp, and then I uh, return it. But before I return it, now watch closely. I use memoization. I use memoization even before I do the loop because I, if I already saw this state before, it means it is stored in the memo table. So if the memo table value for this state is not minus one, it means it has already been calculated. I returned it. I and do, I don't bother myself for doing this recurrent uh, transition anymore. Else, I do it and I make sure that I got my answer, but before I put the answer in the, before I return the answer, I make sure to store it in the memo table. For what? For the next time, if anybody wants it, I can return it. And this is called memoization. So let us repeat what is memoization. You declare a memo table. You uh, check this memo table whenever you, you need a value. If you don't have this value, you calculate it, but you put it in the memo table. And of course, before everything, you have to initialize your memo table to dump values that are used to check whether this value is calculated or not. So this is the memoization. Another uh, useful trick here is that you are using always, we are referring to this memo DP table, memo G of money, memo G of money, memo G money, and we can use a local reference in C language uh, or in C++ language, sorry, and this local reference will tie the answer variable to the memo G of G of money, and whenever we change it, like here, answer equal max, etc., it will change the, also the value of this element in the table. So this is only a trick to, to, for fast access and fast uh, writing tip. And let us see the demo. So here is our problem. And we can find here the test cases. We have three test cases. The first with the amount money uh, 100. And we have four garments. So we have four lines. Uh, we have four lines. And the second, we have $20 for three garments. And we have three lines of uh, possible garments. For example, here we have the first one. It, it has three models and um, uh, the prices of these three models. And lastly, we have... Uh, and lastly, we have... Uh, the amount 5 with 3 garments and uh, of possible prices 5, 4, 8, 10, 6, and 7, 3, 1, 7. And if we run this, pro, uh, this program, we will get the answers. 75 is the maximum value you can spend for the first test case. And 19 is the maximum amount you can spend for the second test case. It is the test case A for the example in our lecture. And for the third text test case, you cannot have any possible solution. So the program will output no solution. And here you can see the exact same program that we saw in the slides with commented the local reference and uncommented the uh, memo variable itself. But here, suppose we are not only asked to display the amount, the maximum amount of money we can spend, we are also uh, asked to display the optimal solution. So we can write this, uh, this function, which is print underscore dp, which takes exactly the same parameters as the dp backtrack uh, function and the same state 
and in which you try to backtrack for each uh, given amount of money and estate and uh, garment you will search in your models for the price that uh, is the same as in the memo table calculated before and if it is the case you print it you print this uh, price and then you call recursively the print GP for the G plus 1 and of course for money minus price GK. And if you want to print only one possible optimal solution, whenever you find the model you break in order not for not to continue in the loop uh, on K. If you want to print all the possible solutions, you remove the break uh, here in order to continue looping. And let us see a demo. In this demo, this is the same print function we have seen in the slide, but in which uh, we modified a little bit so that the output is more understandable. And we removed the break. And let us run for the same uh, given example. For the first one, of course, the optimal value is still 75. And the optimal solution is A10750. For the second test case, which is given the money amount 20, the optimal value is 19. And you can see here that there are more than one optimal solution, which are 4105 or 410. The other five, because you have two items here that costs that cost five dollars, or you can take, as we have seen, six, ten, three, or or also a, a fourth optimal solution, which are, is eight, ten, one, and they all give us. So this is the way to print a possible solution using backtracking, and of course for the last one there is no solution and there is no optimal. The second variant of DP is the bottom-up approach and this approach will also take an acceptable verdict and uh, it is it can be uh, done in three steps. The first is to determine the parameters which are which constitute, constitute the state. Secondly, we have if we have n params, for for example, we have to prepare an n-dimensional di DP table with one entry per state. This is uh, this is similar to the memo table in the top-down approach, but with the difference is that in bottom-up approach, you uh, you can have you have to initialize only some cells and with known initial values that constitute the base case. However, in the top-down approach we saw before, we completely initialize the, the memo table with dummy values to indicate that they are not yet computed. And uh, to determine uh, the third uh, step is to determine the cells and the states that can be filled next. So first we fill only the base case and then we will determine the transitions. We call them the transitions. How, how can we fill the other rows so we will, or, or columns? So we will repeat until the DT table is complete. And we will do this using iterations now, not using recursion. So this will be done using loops. This is the bottom-up approach. So in our example, the wedding uh, shopping, we will say that the state is the current garment and the current money, like just like in the uh, top down. We will reverse to make the G before the money because uh, we will move from state to state incrementing G. So we have uh, advantage, to, we have to take advantage of the cash friendly row major traversal in, in, two dime, uh, in 2D arrays. In C and Java and uh, the languages. So we want to make the G uh, the row in this and not the column in this. And secondly, we will initialize this two dimensional table, which is now 20 lines times 201 uh, column, to uh, true only if the uh, 
line G column money is reachable so it is possible to buy this garment so only the cell states that are reachable by buying any of the models of first garment G0 are set to true so we will fill only in the second step we will fill the first row and in the uh, iteration in the third step we will use the info we will use the info of the current row G to update the values of the next row G plus one. Let's take our test case A and see the example. Here we have the memo table. It has 20, it has in this uh, example uh, three lines, but in the general case you have to reserve 20 lines. 201 uh, columns we will show here on only the lines that are useful for our problem so we have m equal 20 we will show from 0 to 20 and c equal 3 from 0 to 2 3 garments and then we will initialize this table to false except for the reachable test cases for the reachable states, sorry, for garment zero. What are the reachable states? Remember, the second dimension is the money left, we have left, and the first dimension is the garment. So for the garment zero, if I have $20, can I buy the garment that costs $6? Yes, I can. What money I have left? I have 20 minus 6, 14. So I initialize the 14, the entry 0, 14 to true. I can also buy, if I have $20, I can also buy the uh, model that costs 4 and this will leave me $16. And I can, uh, in another scenario, buy the garment which costs 8 and this will leave me $12. So in these three cases, I will put 1. So now we will iterate until G1, uh, G equal 1, which is G1, which has two models. And we will take the first case. We, suppose we have $12. Can I buy the garment that costs 5? Yes, I can. And it, this will leave me with, uh, with 12 minus 5 equals $7. So I, the, the state here is reachable. The entry here of 1.7 is reachable and I can also buy the garment that costs 10 and this will leave me with 12 minus 10, $2 and this is also reachable. I repeat the same thing for the uh, amount, the entry 0.14, I can buy the 5 and I can buy the 10 which leaves me with four or nine dollars and for the entry 016 I can move on for, uh, to 10 or, or uh, 5 which will leave me with six or eleven dollars so now I have filled all the possible reachable cases in the uh, second garment and for the third garment I will repeat the same process if I have two dollars I can only buy the garment that costs one dollar and this will leave me with this will leave me with one dollar if I have if I have four dollars I can buy either the one that costs one either the one that costs three if I buy the one that costs three it will leave me uh, the state uh, two one which is already uh, already used already uh, set to one and the other one I will set the state three I repeat the same thing if I have six dollars I can buy all the possible uh, models so I put six minus five equal one six minus three equal three and six minus one equal five I will set all these states some of them has already been set and I continue this way until I fill my memo table 
And what is the optimal solution here? How do I find my, my optimal solution? The optimal solution is the one that is uh, left me with the least amount of money, which is one at the last row. So here is my optimal solution. One uh, is reachable, initial value 20. So it is 20 minus one, $19. And here is the code, and we can see the three steps in the bottom-up solution. The first one is you have to, uh, to define your state. The state is government money. The second one is you have to initialize your table, memo table. So reachable is initialized to false everywhere except for the base cases. For uh, the garment zero, for the garment zero, and for the number of models in this garment, if M minus the price is still positive or at least zero, we set reachable of zero, the garment zero, the amount of remaining money, the a second entry to true. So this was the first two steps. The first step is to use the info of row G minus one in order to update the values at the row G. So here, for every, for every G from one to C, uh, we will do the following. We will uh, loop over the money and uh, over the money from zero to M. And if this entry is was reachable so was set to true i can now loop over the available prices of my models of the entry g i loop over the prices the number of the prices are is uh, in the price g0 and for each k if money minus the price of gk is still positive i set it to reachable okay I put it to true and I uh, repeat in the same iteration here there is no recursive function and uh, I repeat the for loop and at the end what is the optimal solution the optimal solution I go from left to right and for money equals zero because I want the least uh, remaining uh, my amount to M and uh, while it is not reachable, I increment. So I, I exit this loop. Uh, the sooner I found a reachable value, and in this case, I print it. And if I reach the end of my array with no reachable values, that this means that there is no solution. Let us see the demo. So here is the solution that we has just examined and you can see the the base case initialization the boolean reachable the boolean uh, gp table and the reading of the test case and the uh, and the iteration in order to fill all the uh, gp table and at the end you find the optimal amount of money which is my M capital M minus money. And if we run over the same uh, input, you will have the same output. Okay. And now we will continue to see a very uh, nice trick in space saving techniques. Uh, it, is, um, it is a remark that at each iteration, you only need the row before, in, in each row you are computing and you are trying to fill in this example, uh, at each iteration you use only the values of the row that is above. And even if you have 20 rows, you don't, in the line, for example, in the row 10, you don't use, and you only use the row 9. So the trick is to, to save the space in order not to have the order of the space very big, you can discard the older ones. So you can just choose a table with only two rows here and 
that you alternate. You calculate one and then you calculate the other and then you fill one. And the code becomes the following. So this is the code. And what we will change here, we will change Boolean reachable. It will, it will have only now two lines instead of max GM. And we will change the way we are filling the table. So we will not move G unless look how it becomes. So now Boolean reachable will become two rows only by the number of columns. And uh, we will use the variable current equal to one that after each uh, iteration in the for loop, I will alternate the current will become equal to zero, then to one, then to zero. And then I will fill inside current. And in order to calculate, I will uh, use the values inside the current minus one. Okay, so here you go, and uh, memset reachable false, I initialize, and then if uh, I, I, at, at every iteration, I have to reset the row because I want to fill new values, so I have to consider that it was uh, empty row, so I use again memset here. And uh, in the for loop for money equals zero to m, if reachable not current because current is either zero either one. So if current equal one, uh, uh, the previous row is zero. If it is zero, the previous row is one. So I I use the negation of current to indicate the previous row, and then I continue normally. And at the end, I, I loop for money equal zero, money less than M, and not reachable, and not reachable, not current. Okay, so because the last time I advanced current, but without using it, of money uh, plus plus money, and I choose the solution as is. Let us see a demo again. So uh, again, this is our program and that is running. Display the optimal solution as we have already mentioned, many DP problems request only for the value of the optimal solution. And uh, whenever you are required to print the optimal solution, we have seen a way, the way one was which is uh, used in the top down and we use the recursive uh, backtracking uh, you can uh, always return to it and the second way is used in the bottom up approach and can still be applicable for the top down in which you have to store the predecessor information at each state so if you are asked to print the optimal solution and you are using the bottom up approach you have to keep in mind that while calculating you have to keep the predecessor information and if more than one optimal predecessor uh, and you have to print all the output you you don't have only to choose between them so you have you are obliged to store them in a list because you cannot store them in one uh, in one variable and once you reach the optimal final state you can do the backtracking and follow the optimal transition or transitions recorded at each state until you reach one of the base cases and then you will print it most problem authors usually set additional output criteria so that the selected optimal solution is unique so even they will tell you the last one, the first one, the, the one with the most, uh, etc. Uh, uh, so that uh, it will be easier for them to judge instead of listing all the solutions. We will finish this section by comparing the two dynamic programming approaches, which are the top down and the bottom up. The common thing between them is that they use the table. They both use the table, the tabular method, which is the computational technique that involve, uh, involves a table. 
The pros of uh, top-down approach is that just like we introduced it in the beginning of this section, it is a natural transformation from normal recursion. So you only compute sub problem when necessary. If the sub problem is not encountered, you don't compute it. You don't fill that. You don't fill all the table. The cons of the top-down approach is that it is slower. Why it is slower? We said already here that you only compute the sub problem when necessary, so this makes it sometimes faster. And then, uh, because we don't compute all the sub problems, but then we in the cons we say that it is slower. When it is slower, this method, if there is if there are many sub problems and you that you encounter and you have to compute because of the recursive call uh, overhead. Because calling a recursive function is opening a new memory in the stack, so this will this will overhead. And other cons is that it uses exactly the order of states table size. You cannot just like we did uh, two slides before. We cannot save in the memory, like in bottom up approach. So maybe you can reach an ML verdict which is memory limit exceeded and uh, what about bottom up the pro of the bottom up is that this is the true form of dynamic programming in fact it is faster because if there are many sub problems and they are all visited uh, it is uh, an iteration so there is no recursive calls you can save memory space, space just like we have seen. And um, a table filling order is topological order of the implicit uh, uh, di uh, directed acyclic graph that we will see later what is the relation of the uh, DAG, but we saw already in the beginning when we studied the overlapping. So, and this is the proper, the proper sequencing of the nested loops, if you choose them well. The cons of this approach, of the bottom-up approach, are that uh, it may be sometimes not intuitive to those that are not inclined to uh, recursion. And uh, if there are M states, the bottom-up approach will visit them. Uh, and fill the value of all the M states. You have to fill them all in order to advance. So this was, uh, so you can, in most of the cases, both techniques are very fine and they will give you the, the acceptable answer and everything is okay. But you have to know the difference between them in order to be able to choose. Now we will examine some classical examples and uh, the one we saw for the wedding shopping is not a classical uh, DP problem, but it is an easy uh, non-classical DP problem. We will see together now some classical examples and classical problems with efficient DP solutions and with uh, states and trans transitions that you should be mastering and um, to use later. Among these problems, we will see maximum 1D range sum, maximum 2D range sum, longest increasing subsequence in this, uh, in this lecture. And next, we will continue with the uh, problems 4, 5, and 6.